are you normal? Isn't that a great question? Are you, in our, in our generation, are you normal? And here's what we have to understand about normal today. If you are normal in America today, you are sick. All right? If you're normal in our culture today, you are sick. Normal is broke. Normal is self-obsessed. Normal is filled with pride. Normal is stressed. Normal is anxious. Normal is discontent. Normal is dissatisfied. If you are normal in America today, you are sick. And the good news is that you and I are called to be anything but normal. Normal is not for us. Normal is sick. When we turn to 1 Peter chapter 2, we see a calling for the people of God to be something outside of normal. We read here, beginning in verse 9, who you and I are called to be as the, as the church, as the people of God. And he says this, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. This is who you are. You are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood. You are those who have been caught up out of this world and set apart for a special and sacred purpose. This is is who you are, a people called out of darkness, out of the normal, out of the cultural milieu of whatever we live in today, and you're called and set apart to be something different and distinct from the world. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Through the activity of God, what God has done for you through Christ, you have now been called out of normal into a unique and special situation. He says, dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they may accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. You and I are called to live as aliens and strangers. This is a room full of aliens. That's what it's supposed to be. This is a room full of aliens of people who have been called out of the normal, a set-apart, chosen, special, sacred people on mission from God to display to the rest of the world the character and the quality and the love and the grace and the mercy of God. This is who you are, aliens and strangers, the Scripture says, in this world today. The scripture says that you and I are in the world, but we are not of the world. You and I are something distinct and set apart. This is not our home. Our home is the kingdom of God, where God rules and reigns, and, and this is not our home. Uh, Susan and I uh, went, on, went, went to Mexico a few weeks ago on vacation, and one of the things that we sometimes do at, at dinner in uh, Mexico is we kind of look around and try to figure out where people are from. So that's kind of fun when the conversation kind of lags uh, and so we look around, and some people give themselves away by their accent. So you know, hey, I know they're not from the United States because of the way that they're talking. Other people, it's, it's a little more fun to figure out. We can always usually figure out who the English people are at dinner because English people eat in a unique way. Y'all know how English people eat? They eat with both hands at the same time. I mean, so you always kind of pick them out. And I had, a, I had a good English friend who always said that we Americans eat like barbarians. Uh, because the way they eat is a little bit different. So we can always pick out the English people. The Spanish guys aren't hard to find on the beach, right? <laughs> but because they're not wearing the same kind of, uh, of bathing suit that I'm wearing. They've got the little Speedo on. So I know, they, I know they're not from you know, the United States. And, and you can just go around, and when you're in a foreign country, and especially where there's these mix of all these different people there, you can say, hey, man, they're, they're from different places. You just kind of get a feel of the different countries if you hang out with people long enough, and you begin to see there's a distinct characteristic to people where they're from Europe, United States, or Canada, or, or Asia, wherever they're from. They've got these unique characteristics. And you and I, as the people of God, as those who, who are living for the kingdom of God, we've got some unique characteristics about us that make us stand out from the culture in which we live today. When people look at us, they ought to look at us and see aliens and strangers. When we're in Arkansas, they ought to say, you ain't from around here. 
All right, that's how you say it in Arkansas. We recognize that there's something distinct and different about the quality of our lives. We're called to be aliens, strangers in a culture that is sick. Now, that shouldn't surprise most of us because you and I are called to be disciples of Jesus Christ. And, and it, what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, it doesn't simply mean that you come to church on Sunday. Lots of normal people come to church on Sunday. Being a disciple of Jesus Christ is more than that. It doesn't mean that you just read your Bible from time to time. It doesn't mean simply that you came down in front of church one day and, and said, hey, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior because I don't want to go to hell. Being a disciple of Jesus Christ means something more than that. It means that you're actually following in the footsteps of Jesus. It means you're becoming more and more like Him. His, his mind is becoming your mind, and, and the activities of Christ are becoming your activities. Activities. You are one of his followers. You can be identified with Christ because of the way you live, because of the quality of your life. That's what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, to be becoming like him. And when we look at Jesus' life here on the earth, would anybody say that Jesus' life was normal? I mean, listen, to, just remember all the strange things that Jesus taught. Jesus said, if you want to be first, you have to be last. He said, if you want to be great, you have to be a, a servant of everybody else. He said that, that if you want to find your life, you have to die. If you, want to, if you want to have real life, you have to give it away. Jesus said, if somebody strikes you on the cheek, you're supposed to turn the other cheek. Jesus says that if somebody, if somebody betrays you, that you're supposed to forgive them. That those who hurl insults at you, that you're supposed to bless them. Is that normal? It wasn't normal in his day, and I don't think it's normal in our day either. Jesus, Jesus uh, healed people. He cast out demons. He raised the dead. Uh, Jesus befriended those who are the most outcast in the society of his day, the prostitutes, the tax collectors, and the sinners. And I tell you, that doesn't seem real normal to me. He was the King of kings and the Lord of lords. All authority and power was given to Jesus, and yet he allowed himself to be beaten and crucified and spat upon because of our sins. And it wasn't because we were being loving. It wasn't because we were being nice. The scripture says that we were turned away from God. We were betraying God. We were spitting in the face of God. And yet in light of all those things, Christ took all of our sins for all time on the cross. Jesus took all of those sins upon himself, and he died for us. And as he lay on the cross dying for us, Jesus prayed a really strange prayer. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Any of that sound normal to you? I tell you, it wasn't normal in Jesus' day, and it's not normal in our day. Jesus was a stranger and an alien in his time, in his culture. In the same way that you and I are called to live as strangers and aliens in our culture today. And if we are followers of Jesus Christ, we will not fit in in a sick culture. If we are following Jesus Christ in a culture that is self-obsessed and, and broke and stressed and anxious and depressed and, and full of all sorts of disorder, we will not look like the culture in which we live. We will be distinct and we will be different. We will be the chosen ones, a royal priesthood, a people set apart for God. That's who we're called to be. And listen, that's, that's, that's tough. Well, I always have to admit that's tough. And, and it's tough in one way because you and I have just this internal desire to blend in with others. In fact, Peter recognizes it, and that's why he writes here in verse 11 of chapter 2. He says, Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. He says, listen, remember who you are. You're not like everybody else. And, and he urges us to abstain from that desire to be normal, that desire to blend in, that desire to be comfortable in a sick culture. He encourages us, to, don't do it. Don't do it. That, that desire that we have to kind of lick our finger and stick it up in the wind to decide which public opinion poll is going to tell us what is right or wrong today. He says, don't do that. Don't give in to those desires to be normal, which wage war against your soul, which wage war against that which is eternal, which is lasting, which is beautiful and holy and has value. Don't give in to that desire that you have to, to, to blend. 
to fit in. Hey, it's not hard to see that kind of internal desire that we have when you, when you watch kids as, as they kind of grow up. You know, you watch kids when they're growing up, when they're little, they wear crazy things, and they do crazy stuff, right? And, and they kind of don't care, and they just they go play in the mud, and they run around naked all the time, and they, they don't really care what anybody's doing. And, and then they, as they get a little older, and then they become a teenager, they, they kind of start feeling different. They kind of start looking around at what other people are wearing before they come to church. And by the time they get like most of us, they're like, hey, well, you know, i got to figure out what the attire is at church before I show up, because I want to make sure that I blend in. You, you see that happening, and that happens to a lot of us because we just have this it's something in us that just feels like we ought to blend in. And, and the Scripture says, no, 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 no. That's not who you are. You are a royal priesthood, a chosen people who are called to live as aliens and strangers. Don't, don't blend. Don't blend. You, that's not who you are. You're the people of God. And you live for an audience of one. You live for an audience of one, saying, what can I do to please the Father? Seeking first the kingdom of God and saying, God, I know you're going to take care of everything else if I just keep my eyes focused on you. It's, it's hard to be an alien and a stranger because internally most of us have this desire to blend. And knowing that, uh, we also face external pressures from around us of people who want us to conform to what is normal. It's what Peter's talking about here in verse 12 when he says, Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Live such good lives that though they accuse you of doing wrong, that they're going to glorify God. Let me just figure this out. If you're living holy, if you're following after Jesus, if you're doing what is right and loving, if you're, if you're forgiving those who betray you, if you're blessing those who insult you, why are pagans going to accuse you of anything? You know why they're going to accuse you of things? Because you're not normal. That's why. See, a normal world doesn't want you to stand apart. The normal world doesn't want you to be distinct. The normal world that lives in darkness doesn't want light to be in there. People just want to do their own thing and live apart from God. Listen, they don't like to be confronted by the fact that there is another life. There is another way. And there will be people who try to get you to conform. And, and they'll say nice things like, you know, hey, what's the big deal? Come on. I mean, come on, everybody's doing this. I don't know what the big deal is here. I mean, come on, what are you, a, a Mrs. Goody Goody? Or, or what are you, Mr. Churchy Church Man? I mean, come on, here, I mean, who, who really cares? I mean, you're making a big deal about this. You didn't used to care about this. You used to be fine with this kind of stuff. What happened to you now? I get, you're too holy for us now. I get it now. Oh, you're Mr. Holy Man. You can't. You know, I'm not the only one, am I? Man, I, I, hope, I hope I'm not the only one who's had that experience. Because, listen, if nobody ever makes fun of you because of your faithfulness to Jesus Christ, you are too normal. If nobody ever makes fun of you because of the distinct quality of your life, because of the choices you make and how you live, if nobody ever notices that, you are absolutely too normal. And normal is sick. Normal is sick. Jesus said it like this in, in John chapter 15. And Jesus says, beginning in verse 19, He said, If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. Jesus says, Hey man, if you're just like everybody else, man, you're going to blend in. The world's going to love you. It's all going to be good. I mean, if you're like the world, you're going to blend in, and, and that's going to be fine. The world's going to love you. He says, As it is, you do not belong to the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember the words I spoke to you. No, one, no servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will also obey yours. Jesus said, hey, listen, you know, don't believe that you can follow me and not experience what I experienced. He said, listen, if, if Jesus couldn't do it, if Jesus couldn't live in such a way that, that he could reach out and people could see how loving and gracious and kind he was, and if, if he couldn't live in such a way that he avoided persecution because of, of, of how he lived and because he was following God's commands for his life, then you won't do it either. And Jesus said, if they persecuted me, they're also going to persecute you. And if no one ever makes fun of you because of your faithfulness to Christ, Listen, you've blended in way too much. You are called to live as aliens 
and strangers in this land. You know, and I, I praise God for, for all the aliens I know. Because the, the aliens and strangers in my life, I mean, they, they continually point me back to God. They continually remind me that this is not my home. They continually remind me of the holiness and grace of God. My wife's an alien. I, absolutely, without a doubt. I mean, she's strange. Uh, well, I mean, I mean she's, she's thoughtful about what she does and, and how she speaks and, and, and what she watches. And she's just very sensitive about all this kind of stuff. And, and, and if you go in our shower, it's strange. She's got these prayer cards in there. And she's praying for me. And she's praying for our girls. And she's praying for uh, the church and all this kind of stuff. I mean, it's just strange. But perhaps the most alien thing about my wife is that she refuses to tell fibs. I mean, even little ones that don't really matter. I mean, we all know that, right? I mean, her yes is yes and her no is no, and she just chooses not to tell lies, and, and that makes her really hard to live with uh, sometimes. <laughs> when, when, when I had first started preaching, you know, maybe for the first six months, it didn't last long, uh, after I would preach on Sunday, we'd go home for lunch, and I'd go, Susan, well, what'd you think? Tell me, tell me how it was. Man, it, the poor Susan. I mean, she's not like a lot of women who would just say it was great, honey, and, and go on. She would just kind of, she would say, well, you know, it, it was okay. I said, what, really, what was wrong? And so we'd have to, and, and she just, she refused to just tell a lie. And, and so it really wasn't good for me. And so I said, you know, I'm going to stop asking her uh, uh, how the sermon was. Because, you know, it was hard on her, and it was hard on me hearing what she had to say. I said, man, I'm just not going to ask anymore. And, and it's probably been 13 years since I've said, what do you think about the sermon today? I just learned not to ask because she's always going to tell the truth. Her yes is yes and her no is no, even on the little things. And you know what? That makes her an alien in our culture today. Because the truth is, most people lie, right? I mean, about all things, but about the little things, we think it's okay. She's strange in our culture today. Curtis Miklich and his family are going to join the church today. Curtis is an alien. His whole family is aliens. Uh, and you know why they're aliens? Because Curtis has a good job. He's got a nice family. But you know what the man wants to do? All he cares about is providing homes for orphans. And that's all the guy wants to do. I mean, he's just coming to me and saying, hey, what can I do? How can we? And he's willing to give everything he has simply to see kids that don't have a home, that they get a loving Christian home where they can be introduced to Jesus Christ as the Lord. And where they can experience the love of God in a very practical way. I mean, he's opened up his home to kids. He's trying to make his home a group home. And there's so many things to be doing. And, and God's just blessed him financially. And there's lots he could be doing. But he chooses just again and again to just put it back into the lives of, of young people who absolutely need a home. And you know, you know what? That makes him an alien in our culture today. Uh, Ron came to see me this week. Ron Brixey, he's an alien too. Ron came to my office this week, and he didn't come to complain. That makes him strange to begin with right there. He just said, Jeff, I just want to come. He said, I just want to come in today. He said, I just want to tell you how good God's been to me. He said, man, God's just been blessed. I just want to come. I just, I just want to tell you all the good stuff that's going on. And, man, he was just giving praise and glory to God and, and just realizing where all the good stuff in his life was coming from. And so, man, it was just so strange to see somebody just, man, recognize that every good thing that we have comes from above. But that's what Ron was doing. Man, you just see the joy in his life. He's just strange that way. Listen, we've got a lot of strange people in our church, people who are choosing extravagant generosity over greed. We've got, man, we've got a bunch of teachers in our church, and practically most teachers are aliens. I mean, not all of them. Some of them aren't any good. But most of them are, could do anything, and, and yet they choose to spend their life teaching kids and, and trying, to, trying to work in kids' lives. And some of them work in schools that aren't all that nice. And, man, that's strange in our culture today because they could do lots of other things. We've got a lot of youth who are aliens today. I went to an alien purity ceremony uh, a few months ago where we had all these sixth graders committing their lives to be, to be pure for God, to wait until they're married, to have sex with their spouse. And I want to tell you, that's strange in our culture today. And if they choose to be faithful to the commitments that they have made, they need to recognize that they are not going to blend in. They are not always going to fit in. They are not always going to be comfortable in this world today. They are going to live as aliens and strangers in a world that is sick. And I praise God for that. Because normal is sick. I praise God for those who live as strangers in this culture. Who keep pointing people to another home. Keep pointing people to the grace and holiness and the goodness of God. I praise God for them. And you know what? The world needs, our culture needs some aliens. Our culture needs some people who live strange lives 
today. Not people who will quote Bible verses. Not people who will simply tell people that they go to church. But, but people who will live as disciples of Jesus Christ. Accepting what that means for our lives. Knowing that we won't be like everybody else. We'll be a royal priesthood. A chosen people. That's who God has called you to be. And I want to tell you, that's where all the blessings are. It's normal. It's sick. It's stressed. It's broke. It's self-obsessed. It's choosing instant gratification over future blessings. Normal is sick. You don't want to be normal. God is calling you out of that today. God is calling you to accept uh, your walk in this world as aliens and strangers, a distinct and set-apart people. Today we celebrate Holy Communion. Holy Communion reminds us of lots of things. It reminds us uh, of, of Christ's death. Uh, when, we, when we take the bread, it reminds us of his body that was on the cross. The, the juice reminds us of his blood that was shed for us. The, the communion reminds us that Jesus is still with us today, that he's present here. The bread and juice remind us that someday there's going to be a great banquet and Christ is going to come again and we're going to feast with him. But the, the invitation to Holy Communion is also an invitation to participate in the life of Christ. And when Jesus offers you his body and blood, he's offering you his life. And, and he's saying, do you want to participate in that life which belongs to Christ? Are you prepared to live as aliens and, and strangers in this world so that you might experience the very best that God has to offer? You're ready to trade in sick for joy and peace and faithfulness and hope and patience and life. That's what Christ is offering you today if you will receive the grace that he will give you. Let me pray. Gracious God, I thank you. Lord, I just, I, I just praise you and thank you for, for offering us something outside of normal today. God, I thank you that you've called us to be uh, set apart, distinct. Lord, some people in the world might call us strange, but we know one day we're going to be at a home where it's not going to be strange. One day we're going to be in a place where uh, the lifestyle that you call us to is normal. One day we're going to be in a place where we're going to blend in. It's just not here. And God, we thank you that in a world that is broke and self-obsessed and, and anxious and depressed and discontent and dissatisfied, you call us to something different. Lord, you call us to joy and peace and patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to receive that life today, to recognize that it will make us stand up, it will make us stand apart, but that we would receive that life as joy. 